In the middle of Kenya, a helicopter suddenly crashes to the ground, causing all the locals to run away in panic. A group of American soldiers guides the locals out of town as they take positions to find the attacker, only for two soldiers to suddenly disappear in a puff of smoke. The group immediately opens fire at an invisible enemy, but when the leader turns around, he sees something explode. The discharge sends him flying and knocks him out. Sometime later, the soldier wakes up in a prison cell with no memory of where he is, how he got there, or even his name. There's a serious cut on his arm, the police station is in ruins, and the power is failing. Desperate for answers, he looks around and discovers a loose brick on the wall, so he takes it off to look outside, only to discover a helicopter crashing to the ground in the area in complete chaos. He starts yelling for help, but this causes the prisoner in the next cell to scold him because making noise will get them killed. Her name is Nadia and she's a French doctor who had been working in a foreign aid hospital for a little over two years. As a loud stomping noise outside causes the building to start shaking and power outlets to spark, Nadia explains the entire planet has been invaded by machine-like aliens. Terrified, the guy starts yelling for help through the hole again, ignoring Nadia's warnings. Unfortunately she's right and soon a bunch of men enter the police station looking for trouble. After killing the hostage they brought, they remember that there's a special reward for catching Americans, but Nadia can't understand what they're saying. The American reveals he can speak their language and tries to negotiate. But they only laugh as they let him out. The soldier immediately starts fighting the group leader, exchanging a few hits before they end up falling through the window. Meanwhile the other two thugs go into Nadia's cell, but she quickly defends herself with a glass shard and takes the thug's gun to shoot him. The other guy puts up a tougher fight and pushes her against the wall, but Nadia finds another loose brick and hits him, then she takes his weapon and shoots him too. At the same time outside, the American soldier also steals a weapon and shoots the leader. Another thug comes after him with a taser, but to the American's surprise, he is able to grab it and send the electric shock back to the guy, electrocuting him out. Before he can accept the idea of having powers, he turns around and notices the alien robots coming after him. This is the thing that caused the stomping noise and its huge size is terrifying. As people run away in panic, the American soldier rushes to hide inside a wrecked car yet the robot still manages to scan him from afar, however it just leaves without doing anything. Afterward, the American soldier goes back inside for Nadia, who sees the word, Bo, on his sleeve and decides to call him that. After they pick up a few weapons from the thugs, Bo wraps up his arm wound and they leave the station. Seeing more bodies on their way out, Bo wants to reach the US Army base, but Nadia thinks it's pointless. Everyone is probably already dead and they won't be able to call anyone for help because 8 days ago every satellite fell out of the sky. It's too dangerous to be alone on the road, but Bo doesn't want to stay and do nothing, he wants to fight. In the end Nadia accepts to go with him. They gather all the water and food they can find, doing their best to ignore the bodies. Lying around, and they take off in a stolen car. Bo sometimes can see memory flashes of a fight in his mind, but he can't make sense of them. While they drive down the road, Nadia explains she can fight because she used to be a doctor for the army, so she received some training too. Suddenly a few bullets go through the car window and they have to stop, only to discover they're surrounded by Kenyan soldiers. Nadia tries to negotiate by saying she's a doctor asking for passage and that Bo is his escort, she also offers them their water. While they argue, one of the soldiers sees Bo's circle tattoo and freaks out, claiming that the duo comes, from the dish. Bo takes advantage of the distraction to capture the guy and take his weapon, using it to shoot a few soldiers before demanding to know about his tattoo. A soldier explains that there's a heavily guarded American radar station near the west border that uses the same symbol, he also says that they attacked the duo because it's believed that the American dishes caused the drones to invade Earth because they're the only thing still standing. Then another soldier tries to attack Bo again, but he quickly defends himself yet doesn't shoot because another memory flash distracts him. Afterward, Bo and Nadia take the soldier's jeep and go back to the road to find the radar station. Bo takes off his bandage and notices his wound is shaped like an arrow that points at the dish, so going to the station seems to be the right idea. Moments later they find a danger sign in front of a town, but there's no other road for them to take. As they drive through town, they find the road covered with loose electric cables, which could be very dangerous. However they can't go back because at that moment a robot appears behind them. They have no choice but to drive through the cables as the robot chases after them and opens fire, causing the jeep to eventually stop working. The duo ditches the car and escapes on foot to hide behind some old debris, but this causes the robot to go after a man and his daughter instead. The robot immediately kills the guy right in front of his daughter so Nadia shoots her gun to save the girl, but when the robot turns toward them, for some reason it doesn't attack them. It ends up killing the girl anyway and leaves. When night falls, the duo makes camp and Nadia shares that her family died during the alien attack. Suddenly, a bunch of fighter jets fly by and Bo is happy to see people are still fighting. The next morning, they have to go back to the road on foot. They walk for many miles, coming across wonderful animals but also lots of destruction and bodies. Eventually they hear a noise that almost sounds like a voice speaking English, but when they follow it, they discover as a recording set by a group of locals as a trap. The duo is soon surrounded and captured to be taken to a destroyed building, where they're chained to a wrecked car. At that moment two people pass near them on bikes, and behind them there's a robot also coming. Bo realizes the locals are using them as bait to hunt the robots. 
When the robots are close enough, the hunters activate a mine that explodes right under the robot before they open fire like crazy. However, the robot doesn't seem to take any damage, so instead the hunters throw a chain around it and finally knocks it down by hitting it within. Electrical surge, unfortunately more robots keep coming and quickly open fire, killing most of the hunters in seconds. While the fight keeps going around them, Bo finds a painful way to remove their chains and the duo rushes to hide as the bikers drive away, causing the robots to go after them. Once the enemy is far enough, Bo and Nadia go back to the road. While they're crossing a bridge, Bo notices a light and almost opens fire, but it turns out to be a photojournalist with his camera. His name is Stander, and he's taken lots of photographs documenting the arrival of the aliens. He's seen the spaceships take people away and he's gotten hurt in the process, but he doesn't think he'll make it. Stander shows the duo all the pictures he's taken, including proof that the aliens are using Earth's electrical power and a powerful shot of a kid throwing a rock at a robot. Suddenly they hear an explosion nearby, and although Stander doesn't want to be saved, Bo and Nadia take him away anyway. They manage to find a building to hide in and while they wait, Stander notices Bo's tattoo. He recognizes it and shows him a picture of the radar station, so he tries to strike a deal. He'll give them the camera if they put him out of his misery. Bo keeps getting memory flashes of someone's death and refuses to kill an innocent, so Stander starts yelling and throwing objects on purpose to attract the attention of the robots. Seeing no other choice to survive, Nadia proceeds to choke Stander to death. Afterward the duo returns to the road, but this time, they use the photographs as clues to figure out the most direct way to the radar station. While they continue to walk for miles, Bo gets the occasional flash of memories, but it isn't enough to understand anything. When they reach another abandoned town, the camera runs out of battery, so they steal another car to keep going. A few hours later in the middle of the road, the duo hears weird noises on the car radio and stops to investigate, finding a destroyed robot nearby. It's good to see they can be defeated, but Bo still wonders what their weakness is. Suddenly they hear a stomping sound and see smoke nearby, so they jump back in the car to get away. At that moment hundreds of robots appear behind them and start chasing them with open fire, so the duo ditches the car and runs to hide inside a house. They go down to the basement and cling to each other in fear, but before they can share a kiss, the roof suddenly starts flying up. The alien spaceship starts sucking up the couple as well, but in just a few seconds, Bo is dropped to the ground and only Nadia is taken away. Flashes of memories go through his mind before he falls and loses consciousness. Later when Bo wakes up, he discovers his leg is hurt. After removing the debris from the wound, he has no choice but to continue his journey alone, walking slowly and weakly because of the state of his leg. Eventually he finally makes it to the radar station, but he's devastated to discover everything has been destroyed by the aliens, including the dish. After noticing the graffiti on the wall is fresh, he decides to find the people behind it and comes across another town. Once he reaches the streets, he finds a bunch of people running away from the robots and he's surprised to see this group has a special device that allows them to defeat their enemy. At that moment two robots appear in front of him, but these ones are a different model. They come close to him and scan him but leave without doing anything. This triggers proper memories in Bo's mind, and he remembers shooting a rocket at a robot. A teammate of his got seriously hurt in the process, so Bo had to put him out of his misery. The sudden memories cause Bo to pass out. Sometime later, he wakes up to discover he's been rescued by the locals and brought to a shelter. After a doctor takes care of his leg injury, Bo meets his saviors Kara and Juma and tells them his story. Juma explains Nadia isn't coming back because those ships never return the people they take, and Kara wonders why the aliens took Nadia but not Bo. Desperate for answers, they take Bo to meet an engineer called Roderick, who has built the EMP devices that can bring down the robots and is now working on a bigger one. His plan is to detonate this one right under the alien spaceship, which hopefully will bring down their system and kill all the robots at the same time. However, they haven't been able to come close enough to the ship because it only shows up when there's a large crowd and robots surround it. Suddenly Roderick gets a message from the guards outside, who inform them there are hundreds of robots approaching their town. Juma wonders if they were tracked, and the combo of his words plus Roderick's drawings of the aliens triggers an important memory in Bo. That day when he was with his team and they saw the explosion, a robot grabbed him and inserted some cables into his mouth that implanted a tracker in his spine. Before he passed out, Bo made the arrow on his arm. Since then the robots have been following him to find more humans and hideouts. Kara immediately threatens to kill him to protect her people, but Bo has a better idea. They can use him to attract the ship and finally use Roderick's device. The group immediately makes a plan to find the ship's usual kidnapping spots, and while they're getting ready, Bo thinks he sees Nadia again. Unfortunately it's just a woman that looks like her. Once the team is armed, they take the device through a tunnel to reach downtown safely. Sadly as soon as they come out, they accidentally trigger a hidden bomb that kills a few of them. At that moment they see the spaceship flying in the opposite direction so they re-enter the tunnel to follow it as a big robot opens fire on them. It kills two more team members. But it isn't capable of following them because of its size. After they walk for a while, unfortunately they come across the smaller robots, who quickly open fire and Kara gets hurt in the process. The team manages to shoot down the robots before they can kill anyone but they can hear more coming, so Kara tells them to go while she stays with the grenades to buy them time. The group runs away with the device and when more robots show up, Kara dies as she stops them with a big explosion. 
Meanwhile in the shelter, Juma and a doctor are trying to help people evacuate, but the smaller drones have reached this area too. The doctor soon gets killed, but Juma manages to run fast enough to return to his people. As they try to speed up the evacuation, they discover the robots are making their way inside through the vents, so they get ready to fight instead. As soon as the robot comes out, the locals surround him and attack it without mercy. Back to the team, they find a bunch of robots gathering people for the incoming spaceship. Bo throws one of Roderick's EMP grenades at one of the robots to destroy it, and this distraction allows people to start running away. However, the robots try to go after them and open fire, causing the battery of Roderick's EMP device to get damaged. While Roderick tries to fix it to no avail, Bo remembers the picture and throws a rock at the robots to distract them, but they only glance at him before. Attacking people again, then Bo remembers that the tracker has given him a reaction to the robot's electrical power and gets an idea. He touches the fallen robot with one hand and the device with the other to transfer the power, which puts him in great pain but also successfully powers up the device. An EMP explosion immediately goes off, not hurting anyone but bringing all. The robots down in seconds, including the ones in the shelter. As power goes out in the whole area, the spaceship also starts falling and eventually crashes on Earth in another huge explosion. While the people around them realize the war against aliens is finally over, Roderick checks on Bo, who is finally getting the rest of his memories back. However, he decides to keep his name as Bo, 